and welcome to uh, countersink depth calculations video. What we're going to do here is we're going to teach you how to how deep we should actually take a uh, countersink to provide the uh, chamfer that's required on the side of a hole. Now this one's only going to work for 90 degree countersinks. I've got down there here. Please assume an included angle of 90 degree on the countersink. And remember a countersink, okay, is a tool that produces a chamfer on a hole and we also call that chamfer a countersink. Sorry, can't help it, it's not my fault. All right, that's why I refer to it as that. But I've also got down here countersink slash chamfer. Okay, so one thing to notice, first off we're gonna start off like a little quiz here. We're gonna do a quarter inch hole to begin with. Make sure that you got to understand the countersink, the tool that you're making this chamfer with, has gotta be larger than the hole. I would use a half inch for this one, it would be fine. Or 12.7 millimeters, whatever, okay? So here's how we do it. We know we got a hole 250 thousandths, so the first thing we're gonna do is put in 250 thousandths, okay? Okay, here we go. All right. Next thing we're going to do is is we're going to add our chamfer. Now this is twenty thousandths per forty five twenty thousandths times forty five degrees per side. So that means there's going to be a twenty thousandths forty five degree chamfer on one side, twenty thousandths on the other. Twenty thousandths plus twenty thousandths is forty. So we're going to add to that, okay, forty thousandths. So go plus point zero four, two hundred ninety thousandths. All right. Now that is not the end of it. Okay, that is not the end of it. That just tells you that is the diameter. That is the diameter that we want our countersink to be. Not the diameter of the countersink tool, but the diameter of the countersink on the hole. So this hole, if we were to, it's almost impossible to measure these things. We do make countersink gauges to do it if it has to be that uh, particular, but it usually doesn't. Uh, so that's the diameter we're gonna work with. We're gonna get, we want 290 thousandths. On a 45 degree countersink, okay, all we have to, or excuse me, on a 90 degree countersink, all we have to do is divide this by two. So 145 thousandths. So we would take Z minus 145. All right, let's look at the next one. Here, we'll clear this all out. Okay, here we go. We got a 55, 65, 54 hole. Okay, not that common. And we're going to this time I'm giving you the diameter. And a lot of prints will tell you they'll give you the diameter and it'll say that by like 919 thousandths of four tenths by 45 degrees or something like that. Bottom line is I've just given you the diameter here. So we got to convert that. So 55 divided by 64 equals that. So that is, that's the decimal equivalency of 55, 64 surrounded to way too many places. Okay. Now, you know, in this case, do I need to do that? No, I don't. But I'm just showing you that is how we do decimal equivalencies. You know, the top number divided by the bottom number will give you the decimal equivalency of the, of the fraction. So let's get past this. Since I'm already given, in this case, I've given you the required countersink, okay, the diameter of it, all we have to do, let's see if we can do this. I don't know if this will work or not. Well, it does work. So. That's the diameter of the countersink. That's how big, remember, a countersink is a tool that produces a <laughs> detail that is called a countersink. Sorry, but that's what it is. So here's the diameter we want, 919 thousandths of four tenths. Simply, since it's a 45 degree angle per side, and it is because 90 is the included angle, you divide that by two, we get 45 degrees on one side, 45 degrees on the other. A 90 degree countersink will produce a 45 degree chamfer. And I'm going to call it chamfer from now on. I probably should just do that. Okay, so we just have to divide this by 2. We take this number. This is the diameter of it. We take it, divide it by 2. Equals 400 and 459 thousandths and 7 tenths. You don't have to be that accurate. Four places is kind of overkill. but So it's this one right here. Very good. Let's, uh, let's go back to another one here. Yeah, here we go. I like this one better because this is a different one. We'll clear all this out. Again, this time now we have a, we've drilled a 13 32nd hole and we're going to put a 30 thousandths by 45 degree chamfer on it. So we're using a 90 degree. If it says 45 degree chamfer, you've got to use a 90 degree countersink. That's all there is to it. Okay. So let's go ahead and come up with the decimal equivalency of 13 32nds because we've got to add, in this case, 30 thousandths times 2 to it. So let's see here. Over here. 13 divided by 32, there, that equals that, 
and we're going to add 60 thousandths, 30 on one side, 30 on the other, plus 0 0.06 equals, now that is the diameter of, of, of the countersink that we're actually going to use in our calculations. And not, the counter, not the diameter of the tool, but the diameter of the countersink that we're putting on the hole. Like since it's 45 degrees, we just divide that by 2, 233 thousandths, that's that one right there. Okay, clear that back out. Let's try one more. Um, Let me see if I can find a different one here. Now we'll go back and we'll do one of this one. We'll do this one right here. Okay, so we're gonna we're gonna countersink a three sixteenths. So three divided by sixteen equals one hundred eighty-seven thousandths and five tenths. We got a fifteen thousandths by forty-five degrees. So fifteen plus fifteen is thirty. Everybody's gonna double that. Plus point zero three. That's the diameter we want, and then of course we just divide that by two, and voila, there we go. Now we don't have to take it out to five places, so rounding this to, uh, well, looks like 109 would be just fine. Okay, 109 would just be fine. That is it. Uh, you know, when you're working with 45 degree uh, chamfers, all you have to do is use a tool that is a, has an included angle of 90 degrees, and whatever diameter that you calculate up that you want that countersink, that's the countersink we're talking about that's on the part, or the, sham, the countersink on the part, whatever diameter is, you divide that by two. That is as simple as it is. So again, I made took the decimal close of this, took this number, multiplied it times two, added to that, divided it by two, and I get my proper Z depth. All right, that is all. That's all there is to it. It's pretty simple. All right, see you at the next video.